Welcome to the SSP2 Bending Seminar. During this training, you will learn how to make five basic bends using the TurnPro Indexing Handle Tube Bender. In order to learn tube bending, it is important to know the parts of the tube bender. The roller housing contains the rollers that bend the tubing. The roller dies form the tubing in a particular radius. The radius is indicated on the face of the die. In this training, we will be using a 4 9 radius to bend quarter inch tubing. The tube latch hook secures the tubing while it is being bent. The indexing lever handle is the active handle we will use to bend the tubing. The indexing trigger is used to change the indexing handle position when making bends greater than 90 degrees. This is a patented feature of the bender. We will discuss this more later. The alignment marks will help us to place the tubing in the proper position in the bender. The angle marks will help us bend the tubing to the correct angle. In our first training project, we will make one 90 degree and one 45 degree angle bend to a single piece of tubing. We will also learn how to keep our bends on the same plane. For this exercise, we will need a 9 inch piece of quarter inch tubing. We are using 035 wall thickness tubing, but other wall thicknesses are okay. You will also need a ruler and a marking pen that will write on stainless steel. We will start all of our projects by marking the reference point. In this case, we will use the end of the tubing. Next, make a vertex mark 3 inches from the reference mark. Be sure to make all of your marks all the way around your tubing. This will become more important as our bends become more complex. Next, we are going to place the tubing in our tube bender. The easiest way to do this is by lifting the handle above the die. Then, place the tubing in the die and secure the latch hook loosely over the tubing. Next, we will align the vertex mark properly in the tube bender. Because we are making a 90 degree bend with the reference mark to the left, we will align the vertex mark with the L alignment mark. Once you have the tubing in position, tighten the latch hook so that the tubing does not slide during bending. Now bend the tubing by pulling down on the indexing handle until the zero alignment mark aligns with the 90 degree angle mark. If the tubing springs back a little, you might have to slightly overbend the tubing until the bend is a full 90 degrees. Be careful not to overbend the tubing. Here's how it should look. Next, we will make the 45 degree bend. To make our 45 degree bend, we will measure 3 inches from the center of the previous leg. Be sure to mark all the way around the tubing. Next, we will place the tubing back in the tube bender with the reference to the left of the die. Be sure that your alignment and angle mark zeros are aligned, then align the vertex underneath the 45 degree alignment mark.
before we bend the tubing, we must be sure that we are bending the tubing in the right direction and on plane. In this example, we are bending the tubing in the opposite direction of our first bend. Since we are bending the tubing down, we must point the first leg up. Once everything is aligned, bend the tubing until the zero alignment mark meets the 45 degree angle mark. Now bend the tubing until the zero alignment mark meets the 45 degree angle mark. Next, we will make a right reference bend. As the name indicates, right reference bends have the reference points, the points that we are measuring from, to the right of the vertex mark. In this exercise, we are going to make a perfect U. For the project, use one 9-inch piece of tubing and make marks 3 inches from each end. Next, make a 90 degree left reference bend as we did in the previous exercise. Remember to line up the zeros and place the vertex under the L. Next, keeping the first leg to the left, place the vertex under the R so that the reference point is to the right. Once the vertex is aligned, be sure that the first leg is aligned in the right direction and is on plane with the first bend. Use the tube bender sight lines to align the tubing. In this case, we are bending the tubing in the same direction, so the first leg should point in the same direction as the bend. Now, tighten the latch and bend the tube down 90 degrees. If you did the bend correctly, both legs should be the identical length like this.
Next, we will make a 180 degree bend. To make the bend, place the tubing into the tube bender with the reference just slightly beyond the tube latch hook. Tighten down the hook and make a 90 degree bend. Once you reach 90 degrees, pull the indexing handle outward, then swing the indexing handle upward until it can engage in the next position. Then continue your bend until the zero alignment mark meets the 180 degree angle mark. You might have to squeeze the handles tightly together to compensate for spring back. The last bend we are going to make is an off-plane bend. Here is an example of the bends we will be making. The first bend is a 90 degree bend. The second degree bend is a 30 degree bend that is off-plane by 30 degrees. To start the project, mark the tubing in two places. Place the first mark at two and a half inches from the reference and the second mark at six and a half inches from the reference. At the first vertex, make a 90 degree left reference bend as we have in the previous exercises. Next, we will align the second vertex to make a 30 degree bend. In order to do this, we will have to estimate where the 30 degree alignment mark should be. To do this, locate the 45 degree alignment mark, then move approximately one third of the way towards zero. Next, we will align the tube for a 30 degree offset bend. To make this bend, rotate the tubing until the first leg points straight upward. Next, 
rotate the tubing Once the tubing is in position, bend the tubing until the zero alignment mark meets the 30 degree angle mark. You have now completed your final fabrication. Thank you for participating in SSP tube bending training. The SSP indexing handle tube bender is one in a line of SSP professional hand tools. For more information, please contact your local distributor or contact SSP.